Good morning from BFT in Melbourne. Today we are going to quickly demonstrate connecting your EcoSol system, here's the panel here, the back of the panel, to a digital board. Regardless whether it is a slider or a swing gate, the concept is going to be exactly the same. Step one, this is how I like to start setting up my solar system to my swing gate or my sliding gate operation. Two core cable is all that you will need. So we can see here that we've got a positive side of the panel and a negative side. So I've got one cable going to the positive and I've got another cable going to the negative. It is important that when we connect the negative side of the cable to the left hand side round plug, which I'll show you in a minute, two is positive, three is negative. So this positive, positive side needs to go to number two on the round plug, and the negative side needs to go to number three. Now if you bring your camera around here to the round plug, on the left hand side of your EcoSol board. So undo my round plug, and I'll try to show you to the best of my ability. You can see number two there, is coming from my positive side of my solar panel and number three on that side is coming from the negative side. This is really crucial otherwise your batteries will not charge. Two's positive, three's negative. I'll screw it back on. Okay, beautiful. So now, on the opposite side of the solar panel, I'll just move our little display stand. Hopefully you can see that there. We've got a round plug and we've got a square plug. Okay, so what it is is that the round plug now on the right hand side, just undoing that just momentarily for you. The round plug from the right hand side goes directly onto the control board of the motor that you're using. No matter if it's digital, if it's a swing gate or a slider, the concept's the same. So what we're doing with this round plug is, hopefully you can see it in here, is we are extending this round plug on the right hand side of the EcoSol panel to the gray and black lead that comes off your transformer. So your transformer will be null and void and we disconnect the grey and black cables off the transformer and we extend it to the round plug to the EcoSol board. Now on this um, grey and black cable it's important that the grey cable that comes off the, off the control board goes into pin number one and the black cable goes onto the earth side of the round plug. So the grey and black lead that comes off your control board, the black lead, extend that to the earth side of your round plug. The grey lead off your control board, extend that to number one on the round plug, then put your link in between two and three. So all spots, all four spots on your round plug will be used by a cable of some sort. Disconnect your grey and black lead off the transformer, because it's not in void and then extend your grey and black lead. Leave the other end of your grey and black lead connected onto the control board. Okay, so I'll just quickly screw that back in there again. I'll do it up a little bit later on, a bit cleaner. Lastly, the square plug. Three from your square plug goes into 52 on your control board. Two from your square plug goes to 61 on your control board. Nice and simple, two core cable. Again, it's a must to get that correct. Okay, now that I've explained the cables, just really quickly going through again, you've got the round plug on the left hand side. If you can see that there, that goes straight to your solar panel. Two is positive, three is negative. Again, extremely important you get it right. Otherwise your batteries won't charge. Your round plug gets wired into your control board, your square plug gets wired into your control board, or two core cables for these scenarios, nice and simple. The last 
um, step really into it is this little jumper just here. You can see it just there, that little jumper. Okay, it's sitting on one leg at the moment. I'll just take it off. It's sitting on the bottom leg. That's how you'll generally find it. When it comes to tuning in remote controls, it is imperative that we do not tune in remote controls onto the control board of the motor, but we tune them in to the control board of the EcoSol. Because the idea of this is that the control board on the motor goes to sleep, the EcoSol is what wakes it up. So there's no uh, voltage shrinkage or leakage or whatever you want to call it to try and preserve these batteries as much as possible. Now I'll show you a quick and easy way to tune in the um, remote controls into the EcoSol board. You'll notice that there are three flashes at the moment on the EcoSol board because we've been doing demonstrations on it inside our warehouse for the last roughly week. And we really are consuming uh, the batteries at the moment. We're not giving it a proper full charge currently out in the sunlight. So you whack the jumper on, you'll see the DL2 light come on. It's a solid red light. While this jumper's on, the batteries won't charge. It pretty much isolates the solar panel off the control board. So what you need to do is this tuning in button here on the EcoSol board, you press that button once, and then what you need to do then is, is press and hold down the two top buttons on your remote control at the same time. You'll notice that red light now that was flashing goes solid red. As Soon as I let go, then you hit your desired button, any button on the remote control that you wanna tune in. Now, what happens is, it'll keep on flickering for a few more seconds, allowing further remote controls to come into it. I'll quickly show you that again. While it's still flickering, hold down your hidden button, which are the two top buttons. Bang, I let go. Normally I would choose the top left-hand corner button, but because this is all pre-tuned already to other gate motors in the display area, I'll choose the bottom uh, right-hand uh, corner button there. That's all it is. Press the tuning in button once, two down, solid red light, let go, any one of these four buttons to activate your gate. Remember to take the jumper off so I can start charging again. As soon as I take it off, the DL2 light comes off. And then what I would suggest to do is, on these dip switches here, you can see them there where my finger is marked one, two, three, and four. Flick three and four up in the on position. What that does, that increases the torque time between the remote control and the radio receiver of your automation. Hopefully you find this video helpful. Come and see us. Thank you very much.